Wabarakatuh. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to the sessions. In this session, we have two speakers. The first one is Professor Dr. Fangsua Benoa Fikal from the uh, University of Toulouse III. And the second one is Professor Dr. Safrutin from the Exman Institute, Jakarta. Okay, we invite the first speaker, uh, Professor Fang Suas. Okay. okay, I would like to inform you that uh, Professor Fang Suas is a director of uh, laboratory, the CIMIC, uh, and the coordination to CNRS. And he also team leader of LCC CNRS uh, Toulouse, and also his uh, CS uh, work in parasitology department uh, Toulouse Hospital University. Okay, Dr. Francois, Professor Francois, time is yours. You have uh, maybe thirty-five minutes for presentations. Okay. Yes. Thanks a lot. I would like to uh, thank uh, all the organizers and uh, Professor Mustafa uh, to invite me and to uh, give me the possibility to explain my uh, research. So I would like to present some of the drugs which have been isolated from plants, but also uh, the other way to find new drugs from a synthetic approach. So we can say, and a lot of people say, that now malaria is preventable and curable because malaria mortality has fallen by 25% since 2000. And because also artemisinin-based combination therapies is now the treatment of choice. Moreover, mosquito controls include indoor residual spread and long-lasting insecticidal nets to stop the transmission. We can see that now there are a lot of countries free of malaria and a lot of countries in orange that are in the way to eliminate malaria. But unfortunately, there are still a lot of countries with low global death level, but also in dark blue, a lot of countries with high global death level. So it's important to remember that still now all the world is at risk of malaria. That means that every minute about one child dies for, from malaria. So in endemic areas, about one million deaths each year. That is why it's important to find new drugs. So the problems in malaria treatment are practicability of the drug treatment, the cost, the stability in tropical and subtropical endemic areas, the availability of the treatment, the side effect, and also because the both affected population, the most affected population are pregnant women and children, and it's very difficult to conduct a clinical trial in this both population. So, of course, there are a lot of innovation beating malaria, L like big push to identify new antimalarial, to have quicker diagnosis, to improve recovery rates, also to have genetically modified sterile mal mosquito and resistance marker in order to um, track drug and insecticide resistance. But unfortunately, there are still a lot of insecticide resistance and also antimalarial drug resistance. So to find new antiparamodial drugs, we can so find new molecules from plants in order to valorize the traditional medicine, but also to find new drugs from synthetic ways. 
So, developing countries are particularly affected by malaria. That is why there is a niche for cheap alternative therapies and anti-malaria treatment needs to cost less than one US dollar. But only chloroquine and sulfidoxine pyrimetamine is available at this price. But now resistance is widespread to all these drugs. Conventional drug development that takes at least 10 years and costs about 300 to 500 million US dollars. That is why few pharmaceutical companies are interested in anti-malarial drug development. That is why malaria and enobedensine is so important. It's important to remember that about still now, 80% of the world's population take endomedicine in primary health care. And endomedicine is used for about 60% for the treatment of infectious diseases. In Africa, only 8 to 25% of people go to health centers to treat malaria. That means that about 75% of the people use endomedicine. So it has been argued that traditional medicine needs to be evaluated as they are traditionally used in the hope of finding remedies and to prepare and use locally at very low cost. So drugs can be active against the parasite or against the symptoms. And no medicine needs to combine the skills of both traditional and pharmaceutical medicine. Medicinal plants are used basically in two forms, either as a complex of mixture of constituents or as pure chemically defined active principle obtained by bioguided fractionation. Then, when you have isolated the active compound, you can then modulate the chemical structure by pharmacomodulation in order to increase the activity. There are two very important antimalarial molecules and that are extracted from plants, quinine and artemisinin. Quinine is the first antimalarial drug that was developed. And uh, now a lot of quinoline derivatives from the basic structure of quinine are developed. At present, intravenous tract is preferred and used for severe malaria from quinine. Artemisin is isolated from artemisinia that was used in China for 2,000 years. The active principle artemisinin presents a maximal efficacy against plasmodium with a very fast action, a good tolerance, and now is used with, in, uh, with uh, other antimalarial drugs in artemisinin-based combination therapies. Because of its new chemical structure, there is no cross-resistance between artemisinin and all other uh, antiplasmodial drugs. But the problem of artemisinin is the cost, because um, artemisinin derivative costs uh, at least tenfold more than chloroquine, for example. Because you need to have one hectare of artemisinia to obtain about two kilograms of artemisinin. There is no total synthesis available for artemisinin and its derivatives. That is why a lot of synthetic derivatives are st now studied. In our lab, we have worked on several plants, and the plant as a director indica, also called NIM, is considered, is considered to be one of the most promising trees of the 21st century because they are, this plant presents a lot of properties and because of its worldwide geographic distribution in Africa and in, in India, we can hope to have a local cheap production of Aza Directa Indica. Then from a catalog of many African plants, thanks to our collaboration with Congo, Niger, Senegal and other African countries, we have tested crude extract 
uh, extracted by traditional preparation, and we have tested all this extract in vitro on sensitive and resistant plasmodium falciparum strains. And then we have compared this plant with our reference, that is NIM. And we have um, demonstrated that about 40% of the plants in our catalog that is routinely used in Africa to treat malaria is real, really active against malaria. This kind of work can um, explain what, have, uh, what are the plants that present a real antiplasmodial activity, which part of plants to use, but also the ideal other season to have the more important rate of uh, active principle. We have also worked on, on other plants thanks to a collaboration with Niger and the National uh, Natural Chemistry in France. This uh, plant is Momordica balsamina. This plant is used traditionally in decoction, and this plant is always associated with two other plants, Limeum and Sesamum. So we have tested in vitro against Plasmodium falciparum this plant, and we have demonstrated that only Momordica is active on Plasmodium. So because of the bitter test of Momordica, we hypothesis that Limeum and Sesamum was added only to improve the test. Then we have tested this plant and the mixture in vivo against a marine malaria model, and we have tested different kinds of uh, extract. And it was very interesting to see that in vivo results are totally different to those in vitro obtained. I mean that Momordica alone is not active in vivo, and this is the mixture is active in vivo. So we firstly think that it was about the test, but certainly the other plant can also have a synergistic activity with Momordica or can act on symptoms or to have a stimulation property. So this scientific data confirm traditional use of the mixture of Momordica, Limeum, and Sesamum for malaria treatment. We have also studied a uh, Cochlospermum planchoni plant, a very active plant. A biogagdid fractionation showed that uh, only the tubercles were active, but unfortunately, until now, there is no active principle isolated from this plant. And this plant is sold in Africa in this kind of uh, plastic bag. So we wanted to know if this plant can be a new antimalarial drug. So we have conducted a clinical trial in Burkina Faso in the regional hospital center of Bamfora with a traditional tea formulation, and we have compared. So this um, Indribala, it's the name of Cochlospermum, the local name, against uh, another group treated by chloroquine because at that time it was an um, antimalarial anti drug of reference. And on day five, we can see that we have the same significantly uh, recovery for clinical and parasitological effect for chloroquine and andribala. So cochlospermum plachoni is as efficient as chloroquine for the treatment of uncomplicated malaria. When you see the portfolio, the global portfolio from Medicine for Malaria Venture in this year, we can see a lot of uh, number of molecules in development, but it's important to see that there is no drugs from natural product actually in development. That is why it's important also to find new drugs from synthetic ways. But how to select a new antimalarial drugs? So firstly, you need to have in vitro tests and you need to have a very good in vitro activity. If it's up than one micromolar, you need to stop the development. Then you need to have toxicity. If the toxicity is uh, sufficient less, you can, of course, go on. 
If not, you must stop. Then you need to have uh, evaluation in vivo against a um, marine model of skid mouse uh, infected by Plasmodium falciparum, and you need to have a very low activity. Then, very high activity, so very low uh, doses necessary. Then you need to go on and go on, and you can see that the last uh, steps are very uh, expensive. So it's very difficult to obtain a drug to go to the development and until the market. So we can see there are a lot of, lot of drugs that are, we think, uh, able to go to the development. But in fact, the percentage of success of all these drugs is relatively low, relatively weak. So only this kind of uh, drugs can perhaps go to the market. So in my lab, we wanted to develop a new kind of antimalarial drugs called trioxoquine. The quinoline entity that is found in quinine, in mefloquine, or in chloroquine was being used to synthesize trioxoquine. And this quinoline entity has been attached by a covalent link to a trioxan motif the same that is found in artemisinin structure. The most important thing is this molecule are totally synthetic. So it was easy then, thanks to their modular chemical structure, to change the structure in order to improve the activity. But also you can so um, avoid the problem of um, uh, natural supply. So more than 120 other active hybrid molecules from the family of uh, trioxoquine were synthesized, and the trioxoquine PR1103 was selected for development as drug candidate because of its chemical structure, antiplasmodial activity very really important, but also because of its high bioavailability by oral route. We have demonstrated that trioxoquine is able to act as artemisinin by alkylating M in the parasite by the formation of a uh, not polymerizable polymeriz M drug adduct that is toxic for plasmodium. But trioxoquine also acts as chloroquine because of its quinoline entity by inhibiting the beta hematin formation. So, Trioxoquine are hybrid molecules, and so they present dual mode of action. We have then tried to um, develop trioxoquine resistant strain. So in the same way that we have developed artemisinin resistant strain, the, the only one in vitro cultivable strain artemisinin resistant called f 32 art we have put drug pressure, trioxoquine pressure, under more than three years, but no selection of trioxoquine resistant strain was possible. So parasites do not become resistant to trioxoquine even after a three years in vitro drug pressure. So trioxoquine is a very promising class of antimalarial drugs because it's simple to synthesize, they present dual mode of action and they have potent antiplasmodial activity. But because of economical decision, the pharmaceutical industry decided to stop its development. So when we see again this uh, scheme about all the molecules that are uh, in development, we can see that about 40% or from all the molecules are endoperoxids that mean with the structure, chemical structure very close to artemisinin and its derivative. And the other part is artemisinin based combination therapies. So there are a lot of molecules with a structure 
very close to artemisinin. And this way is normal because thanks to artemisinin, we are going towards malaria elimination. Uh, currently, 52 countries are on track to reduce malaria by 75%. <coughs> Since 2001, and recommendation from WHO, almost all Maria endemic countries use artemisinin combination therapies, leading to a strong reduction in global malaria death for the last 10 years. But there is now a very big problem because artemisinin resistance is now present and this resistance threatens this situation. The first artemisinin resistance was firstly described in 2008 in West Cambodia, in the area of Pailin. And unfortunately, this artemisinin resistance is now regularly confirmed in all Mekong, Thailand, Laos, Cambodia, and Myanmar. And this artemisinin resistance is linked with an increased parasite clearance time, but also with parasite recrudescence in clinical trial. Unfortunately, this resistance is not detectable by classic in vitro threat. And also, this artemisinin resistance is not associated with any of the non-molecular resistance marker. The question is perhaps this artemisinin resistance is the first step before a high and widespread resistance. So according to the clinical failures to artemisinin combination treatment, less sensitive ring forms of plasmodium drive to this artemisinin resistance. So thanks to our in vitro uh, selected artemisinin resistant strain, we have studied a lot of uh, this resistance. And we have demonstrated that, unfortunately, uh, all artemisinin derivatives are also resistant to, um, no, the strain are now also resistant to all artemisinin derivatives, not only to artemisinin. And we have demonstrated that uh, it's a new mechanism of resistance developed by the parasite to artemisinin resistance. I mean that parasites, when um, they resist to artemisinin, they are sleeping like you, perhaps. <laughs> so, artemisinin um, leads a new mechanism of resistance. It's a resistance like dormancy or low, like quiescence. So, during all the treatment, and is the same thing in vitro or during clinical trial, you can see here that the parasitemia during the treatment is like uh, zero. When the strain is sensitive, after removing treatment, the, the, strain, the sensitive strain to artemisinin is really killed. But the resistant strain is not killed. And after removing artemisinin, parasite can grow now again and continue their cycle normally. So the problem is that artemisinin resistance were not detectable by classical resistance assay. That is why we have developed a new chemosensitive assay artemisinin specific. And we have also uh, demonstrated the gene implicated linked with the artemisinin resistance. And this gene is uh, on the gene of, of plasmodium and is called K13. So the current objective in the field are, do you think that artemisinin combination therapy resistance is currently in all endemic areas? For that, we need to do a lot of clinical trials 
to evaluate clinical resistance. Then with uh, selected samples from patients, we need to evaluate in vitro resistance, but also to find if there, uh, if there is or not uh, the molecular marker of resistance on the gene K13 uh, in order to establish if there are relationships between clinical data, in vitro data, and molecular data of artemisinin resistance. But we need also to evaluate new drugs in this artemisinin resistance context to select drugs that are able to kill this new artemisinin resistant parasites. I thank you for your attention. Thank you, Francois, for your nice presentation. Uh, please give your question for the discussion. Now we invite the second speaker, Professor Dean Safrudin.